Well, hello everybody to this FX Trade session. Today we are making a recording looking at a different Fibonacci ratio. We will be looking at the Fibonacci fans. Now there are lots of different Fibonacci ratios. The Fibonacci retracements being the most commonly used ratio. Fibonacci expansions, you have the Fibonacci time zones, you have the Fibonacci arcs. We will be looking at the Fibonacci fans today. Now, Fibonacci fans are usually considered to be quite effective, but the simple reason is that they are dynamic in nature. Now, let, let's just go over one simple fact about price. Right? Let me show you something here. As price, we have the graphs on price. We have the x-axis showing the time. We have the y-axis showing the price. And in between all of this, you have price moving. Usually price never moves in a straight line here, nor does it move in a straight line like this or like this for that matter. Price always moves in, I'm sorry. Price always moves in a diagonal. So obviously diagonal levels, trend lines are usually considered to be very effective. Fibonacci fans are based on nothing but trend lines. And let me go on another time frame and just uh, show you that we use Fibonacci fans for a different purpose. Right? Now Fibonacci fans are nothing but Fib levels. What we have to do, like in all Fibonacci levels, any, any kind of Fibonacci level, let's do this time zone itself, you have to decide on the correct place to start plotting your Fibonacci levels. What I would generally tend to do is, what I want to do always is identify the pivot points. That means I will identify the swing highs and the swing lows. These are what I call as pivot points because it's from here that price has changed trend. Learn to look at price action. Price gives you enough of clues. In this previous entire downtrend over here, you had all your highs going lower. Your highs were going lower, each and every high. Your lows were going lower. It's only after this that your lows started going higher. So this becomes the pivot point. So I look at this as a swing point. This I would classify as an impulsive wave. And I would be taking the lowest low from here, not this low, because you still have a low low. Your Fibonacci levels, whichever Fibonacci levels you're looking at, whether it's a retracement, whether it's an expansion, whatever situation you're using, and you should always plot your Fibs on pivot points, places where price has changed trend from, never in between. If you plot them an in-between level, it will not give you the correct picture. So we are talking about the fans. Let's plot the fans. I will plot my fans from swing high to swing low. This is where I would ideally plot my fans. Now, if you look at this, let me zoom it inside. We have different fan levels. What I generally tend to follow is I have fan levels for a certain purpose, the 38, 38.2, 50, 61.8, 76.4, and 88.6. Now, each and every fan level has got a different purpose to it, but the most important one is the 88.6, which we will be concentrating more on. The base of today's topic is that. Now, let's understand the fans. What generally fans do is, if you calculate the distance from the high to the low, and divide that distance, say, by 38.2, or put a 38.2 part in it, it, it will come somewhere here. So what you do is you plot a fan going through the 38.2 level. That, that's what fans are. They are dynamic levels of Fibonacci ratios. They are trend line levels, if you can call it. As I said, price always moves in waves. So trend line levels become very, very important. Now, in between all of this, what we do have is simple combos. We have five ratios and we have four channels. I call them fan channels. Right. We can classify this as four channels. Simply put, the middle channel, if I take a line right over here, the 68 point line, so long as price is below this, it's still considered to be a downtrend. If it goes in the above two channels, you can say that the momentum has shifted. Mind you, it's not a change of trend. That's exactly what we will be looking at on the fans. Each and every level has a purpose. It's the 88.6 that we will be concentrating more on. Right, let's remove this. Let me show you the effectiveness of the 88.6. Following up some trades on a live thing, let me zoom it down to the EURUSD right now. 
we use the Fibonacci ratios to determine an expected level of support resistance. Now let's, let's take it on a smaller term time frame. Now, where would you classify the swing points? I would classify the swing points, the last swing point as these. These can be classified as swing points. Right? This is the place where price changed trend from. Price was in a downtrend, moved up from here, changed trend, moved from here. Now in between these waves, as I said, in this wave, your wave, you have your highs going, sorry, your lows going higher, your highs going higher. From here onwards, your highs started going low. So we classified these points. Now you can plot a simple Fibonacci retracement. Let's say we are somewhere here. Price has found support somewhere here. We need to determine whether this is indeed a level of support. Is price going to rally up from here like it did or is it going to continue to the downside? Now as traders that is exactly what we are looking for. So when the euro went up and started moving down, we need to know whether it's going to find support somewhere or it's going to continue the downtrend. Right? What we can do is most of the folks use FIB retracements. We can use the FIB retracements to determine support. On the FIB retracements, we can see the 78.6 price stock exactly at the 78.6. It's a very, very important level. But your FIB retracement does not tell you there isn't there a distinct possibility the price could still stop at 78.6, move up a little and still come down. You're really not sure. So your retracements will not tell you that. It is your fans which will give you that. If we plot fans on the same points, swing low to swing high, and if price stops within the 88.6 fan level, as I said, if your 88.6 fan, which is the most important fan level, if it stops exactly at the 88.6, then the possibility of price moving up is pretty much high. Now this becomes the barrier. This is the filter to determine whether this move down is going to be a new retracement or is it going to turn into a full fledged reversal? 88.6 fan tells you that. If price stops anywhere above this, it doesn't necessarily have to stop at the fan. If it stops anywhere within the 88.6 and goes up, you can expect the uptrend to continue or you can expect price to resume the uptrend. If you have a close of a bar below the 88.6, it means that the momentum has turned bearish and we can expect price to move down. Now there are certain thumb rules which we will follow. But the most important point, as I said, is your 88.6 fan is a very, very important level. This is the filter. So the topic of our webinar today is using the fans to determine the extent of a pullback. If it remains anywhere within the 88.6, it is a pullback. It is a retracement. If it gives you a close below the 88.6, it is a reversal. That's as simple and plain as I, as I can put it. Right? Now, let's consider the options. If you have price stopping right exactly at the 88.6, or let's say even at a 76.4 fan, even a 61.8 and starts moving up, we can expect price to resume the uptrend and we say that, okay, we are looking at bullish moves right now, taking this particular example. What happens when price breaks the 88.6? That is more important. When price breaks the 88.6, what do we do? As traders, something which I've always maintained is you decide on the levels. You use the tools of technical analysis so that you can manage your trades more efficiently. You have to be prepared. If price does this, this is what I'm going to do. If price does that, that is what I'm going to do. You are not here to predict price action. Something which I again keep repeating and I joke about it. We are not astrologers. We are traders. We are not here to predict price. We are here to follow price. And following price meaning setting your levels beforehand. If price does this, this is what I'm going to do. So if you have ever price in a pullback, you use the fans. Your condition is if price remains within the 88.6, I'm going to start looking for up moves. What happens if it breaks the 88.6 towards the downside? Good question. Right? Let's go on a couple of examples and have a look at this. Before we go over those examples, let's classify this. We need to understand something called the 1, 2, 3 pattern. Now, this can be classified as a bullish 1, 2, 3 pattern. 
any time price gives you a pullback. That pullback does not take out the previous low of one. It means your underlying momentum is still bullish and you can expect price to resume trend. That's what the one you view pattern is all about. A fan is the strongest confirmation for a one two three pattern. Let's take confirmations of one two three patterns, right? Let's take on a larger term time frame. Anytime price gives you a move, a pullback, it will always form a one two three. So what I can consider here is I can say that this was one one two three pattern, one two and three. A one two three is a very very important pattern. Very effective, very simple to use. I can consider this to be another one, two, three pattern. I can say that this is also a one, two, three pattern. So long as price does not take up its previous low. If I take this low, can I consider this to be a one, two, three pattern? Right now, till the time price was at a double bottom, not really. You needed a higher high. The minute it goes below this, it's indicated. And so we can use the same concept of the fans if I have the one two three pattern. All the one two threes, what I'm going to do is plot my fans. Price is definitely within the fan levels. As I said, it need not necessarily be at the 88.6. If it starts moving up, that means your momentum is still bullish. I'm going to start using the fans on the second one. Swing low to swing high. I'm plotting it from where prices change trends, still on the uptrend, pretty strong, not even gone inside the channels. The next one, I can use this one. What happened? Price broke the fan level. If it broke the fan level, it's the first indication of a move. Now, ideally, your fans should be plotted here. So if I'm looking at the Euro USD, I'm going to be looking at price gone within the fan level. If it starts moving from here, it is still a bullish move. But there is a distinct possibility that price can still go to the lower fans. But what we need to do, of course, in this case, is go down to smaller term time frames and confirm the same. But let's go over different situations. Now let's take real life examples. What I always like to show you is real examples. As I said, price stopped at a fan level. Bounced exactly at the 61.8 and the channels that I told you, it is within the upper two channels, right? Channel 1, channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. It is within the upper two channels. So possibility of bullish moves. When do we need a confirmation? We need a confirmation. We can take it on smaller term time frames. Let me just plot this here so we can go down to a smaller term time frame. Right? This is where we are. What did we do? We can plot fans. Price was within fan levels. If price would have broken this fan level, then we would have said, all right, we have a possibility of price moving down to a lower fan level. You understand the concept of fans that I'm trying to talk about? This is the fan. If we would have had a break on a smaller one, we could have targeted the lower fan level. Now, fans are very, very effective on larger term time frames. There are certain thumb rules which we follow for fans, but first let's go over something else. Let me show you a good example on the EURJPY on a failed fan, right? On the tail. It's something that we've been following. There you go. This is a trade that we've been following, the last trade. Let's take or trade the hard right edge of the chart. This was a swing low. This was a swing high. Price started making retracements. Move down one strong bar. Where do we determine? Are the retracements going to tell us whether it's going to turn into a mere pullback or is it going to turn into a reversal? We will use fans. So we plotted fans from the swing to low to swing high. The condition is so long as price remains within the 88.6. Right? What price did was stopped almost at the 88.6 quite nicely and boom broke through the 88.6. You can see the hard right edge of the chart. Now this told us that if price has broken the 88.6 towards the downside, we expect further continuation of the down move. As I said, using it on a larger term time frame gives you a distinct advantage. Let's go over some very basic steps on this one. If price breaks the fan, usually after it breaks the fan, it has a tendency most of the times 
to come back. If it gives you a close, it comes back to retest the fan level somewhere. Right? It could be anywhere, but a small retracement always there. After that, your first target is always the previous swing low from where we plotted the fans. This is your first target. So if price breaks your fan level, you are going to be targeting this previous swing low, like a double bottom. This is on a daily time frame. If you were trading the Euro Yen on a smaller term time frame, you would have taken intraday trades based on the fact that price has got a high probability of reaching this one. There are two targets for this. This is one. Price sliced through this one also. And then it recovered, which is a very natural law of the charts that we call phenomena of the chart. It's once price breaks a major level, it will come back to retest. Now that it's broken the fib, or now it's broken the previous bottom, the double bottom, what is the next target? In this case, we use something what we call as a fib expansion. And for those of you who have been with me, you know how I plot my fibonacci's. We use the fib retracements, I'm sorry, mindset. We use the fib projections. There's a difference. I call them the projections. Some people call them the extensions. It's the same thing. I will plot my fibs from the swing low to the swing high. Till 100 level. Let me just zoom this a little more and set. Right. We are looking at this. Price broke the fan level. Broke the 100% level also. Till the time price is above the 100% level, these levels above are known as retracement levels. 78.6. 61.850, all these levels are known as retracement levels. Minute price breaks the 100. You have a FIB extension level or a projection level. The 127.2, the 161.8. In the MetaTrader, you can use the same ones on the FIB retracement too. The thumb rule says if price breaks the fan level, let's remove this. If price breaks a fan level, you can determine the targets. Your first target is your previous swing low. If it breaks through that, the next target is your FIB projection of 127. What did we have on the Euro JPY? Euro Yen. Right. We plotted fans on the Euro JPY right here. Let's just zoom it a little more inside. We were looking for support on the fan levels. Price broke the fan levels. Once price breaks the fan levels, you can estimate the targets where price is expected to go and this becomes a very powerful tool. The first target after it breaks the fan level is the previous swing low. Is this particular swing low. Let me just put this across. This swing low. So this becomes your first target. A double bottom if you please. There's a first target that price always reaches. In this case, let's plot it here. Price sliced through that. Once price breaks through that, then we come back and use the FIB extensions or the FIB projections, if you can call it, and the FIB 127 becomes the most likely target. If it breaks the FIB 100 here in this case of the retracement level, it goes to the 127. Now this becomes very, very important because if it stops exactly at the 127, you know you're looking at an up move. If it would have given you a close below the 127 level, you would have expected it to go down to the 161 level. So that's the importance of the fan levels. Now, more than anything else, like they always say, a picture speaks a thousand words. Let's have a look at something that we've been following. USD JPY on a weekly time frame. Let's have a look. Swing low, swing high. Once this move started down, from the month of April, we were concerned or we wanted to know whether this is going to be a mere pullback, is it going to turn up again, or is it going to be a reversal. So what we did was we plotted fans. Swing low to swing high. Till the time price was within fan levels, it was absolutely fine. The minute it gave you a close below the fan levels, we could estimate that, okay, now we are looking for further moves. What is your first target? The double bottom. So we targeted the double bottom. On a weekly time frame, if price breaks a fan level, we can target this. Intraday, we can take trades. It's given you a close, not yet, but this week seems to be closing below the double bottom level. If it does, where do we expect it to go? We would expect it to go down to the 127. 
Where is the 127? The 127 is still over here. So based on these thumb rules, I would expect the USD JPY to continue further to the 82.13 or let's say 8200 round. Now this becomes important as I was saying. You must use the tools of technical analysis to manage your trades efficiently. So what I'm going to do is on the USD JPY, I'm going to remain short till price reaches 82. Intraday time frames, every pullback towards the upside, I'm going to look at it as a further excuse to get into a short trade. Now some trades may work out, some may not. For all you know, from here, price may just suddenly reverse and move up. Okay, so I've missed out on some trades. But believe me, these thumb rules of the fans and the fibs, they work very accurately. So we have a high probability trade. There's something which I call a high probability trade. The price is expected to move down there, which helps us manage our trades much more efficiently. And let's have a look at each of the pullbacks as I was looking at the one, two, three patterns. Right from this move, the strong down move from this level, this is a strong down move. Where can we classify the swing low, the swing high is defined. Can we classify the swing low? Not yet, because price has been making lower lows continuously. So swing low not yet defined. But in each pullback, major pullback, we can determine a bearish 1, 2, 3 pattern. And what is the confirmation for the 1, 2, 3 pattern? Always fans. Did it remain within fans? within fans. As I said, it need not stop at any particular fan level. Further moves to the downside. I will stretch this. I can plot this. Still within fan levels. I can take it here on the next one. Still within fan levels. So long as price does not break the 88.6 fan level on all swing points that I'm looking at, I do expect the downtrend to continue. And if I do expect the downtrend to continue, I expect price to move to a certain high probability level. That's the advantage of using FIBS. The fans mainly to determine the retracements and extensions or projections to determine the targets. Now these work across all time frames, right from the 5 minute to the monthly. But it's more advantageous to use the Fibonacci's on larger term time frames price somehow tends to respect them much more. Right, so this is what we looked at. And one more point which I would really like to make away, which again I keep repeating again and again, is concentrate more on price action. Look at simple levels of support resistance, trend lines, Fibonacci levels. They are enough to give you a clue about what price is going to do. You don't need indicators. In all of the things that we talked about, did we once even refer back to an indicator? We did not. There is no need. Yes, I do have a stochastic, but I use it for a different purpose. Right here, we're looking only at the fans. Right, so that brings us to the end of the session, so we can start the recording here. Let's take some question answers. Okay. Uh, Adrian, GAN fans are based on a different calculation. So you can use GAN fans. There are a lot of traders who do use GAN fans. But I'm not very familiar with them, so I would be the wrong person to ask about this. As far as using a confluence between a GAN and a FIB fan, find a good confluence point. Well, yes, I suppose you could do that. Okay, GVP, Jack, you'll have to specify what time frame. Now, each and every time frame will give you a different version on the cable. All right, Ash, we just go over it once more. The Euro JPY. Uh, no, the USD. The 1, 2, 3 pattern. Right. We look at this as a 1, 2, 3 pattern. I can classify this. This is known as a bullish 1, 2, 3 pattern. This is 1. This is 2. This is your 3. You have a pullback which does not take out the previous low. It's classified as a 1, 2, 3 pattern. The confirmation of a 1, 2, 3 pattern is fans. Your point 3 has to remain within fan levels. If you have the point 3, price on a point 3, breaking the fan levels, it negates the 1, 2, 3 pattern. For me, it's negated. 
I don't classify it as a one, two, three, and I will not trade a one, two, three pattern. Jack, once more, what time frames are you looking at? See, it's not very easy to what will it do in the next week or two? Okay. Now, if you want a prediction, Jack, that's going to cost you money. All right. Not money. It's going to cost you about 10 crates of beer, six packs of beer. If you can send it across, I'll tell you what the cable is going to do in the next week or two. Deal? All right. I'm just kidding around here. A little bit of humor in the room. Let's take a look on the GVP cable what it's going to do it's very difficult to determine let's start off with a weekly time frame right on the cable on a weekly time frame there is a certain harmonic pattern that we've been following let's take fans let's use fans let's start plotting the fans from here price stopped exactly at a fan level a little bit of leeway is accepted you don't have a convincing close below that, so I would accept it. As I said, on a daily time, frame, weekly time frame, a little bit is accepted. So this stopped within fans. So we're expecting price to move up. If I'm expecting price to move up, I would plot my fans here. It is still within fan levels. So as far as the fans are concerned, we can still look for price to go towards the downside. Maybe some more. We could always plot fans from here. The price still remains within fans. Based on the fans, it's really not telling you anything. This is based more on harmonics. We are looking at harmonics on this one. Different time frames will give you different versions. Let's take it on different time frames. Well, what, what I very frankly, what I do expect is the last fan level. I do expect price to continue to the downside based on certain thumb rules of fans that we follow. I, I would expect some more moves to the downside. That's one. What kind of beer, Boyki? Any kind of beer. A beer is beer is a beer is a beer, right? Any kind of beer. <laughs> All right, Jack. Based on the fan concepts, I would expect it to move down a little. Well, Jack, yes, of course you can. That's true, Boyki. Different tastes have different things. Jack, give me your email address. Or you can visit my website, you can, this is my email, you can send me an email and we can talk about it later on. Right now, let's just talk about this. This is my email, just send me a mail. All right, folks, any other questions? We are concentrating more on the fans today. I don't want to deviate from the topic of fans. Okay, Jack, I I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Any other questions? I I'm sorry for the technical hitch in between. I do hope that Adinda can join things together properly. I'm sure she can. It's quite an expert in that. He, right? All right. So that's it. No more questions. Nothing. Boyki, for fans, I would suggest 15 minutes. Five minutes has got a lot of whipsaws. I generally don't go below the 15 minute. Preferably higher term time frames, of course. A four hour or a daily is ideal for fans. But intraday, even 15 minute works as well. Not lower than that, definitely. Yes, yeah, sure, Jay. We can have a look at this. Well, Adrian, you look at your larger term fans first. And let's take this particular example. That, that's a good question. Different fans on different time frames. You have to align. See, as a trader, you have to define what time frame you are trading. Uh, Jack, now that, that ordinary is, that's something really nobody can say. Based on some harmonic patterns, we have expected targets based on that. But till the year and where it's going down to you asking me to predict price, that is something which I never do. I really don't care where price is going to go. I could tell you a level that this is a level of support. It could reach this level of support and we would expect that. But that's about it. No predictions. There's a reason why I don't look at signal services or offer signal services, something which I never do. You must learn to analyze it for yourself. Ordinary fibs, 
or regular fibs same thing boy ki or any fib level a any any fib level fib ratio sorry right you're looking at a retracement you're looking at a expansion you're looking at even a projection or a fan the larger the time frame the better they work that that's what i have seen minimum as you can call it i wouldn't go below 15 minutes 5 minutes is too hip sawing around and it's not going to give you the correct picture let's show you an example on this one right aligning different time frames as i was saying different time frames you have to decide what kind of a time frame you are trading are you an intraday trader are you going to be trading this concentrate on fan on that level don't confuse it too much if i look at it on the 15 minute right now what is the most prominent swing points that i can put this is a swing low right now this is a swing high for me the fans are here what i can see on my screen on the 15 minute time frame but right? this becomes important as so long as price remains within this i know that there is a possibility price can still move up it can come down again there are some certain certain thumb rules now if you take it on a 1 hour on a 1 hour this certainly is but on a 1 hour i can plot fans from this swing point to this swing point and this is giving me something else this has found resistance at exactly one fib level so this is giving me a different picture so as i said every time frame is going to give you a different picture what is your holding time frame what time frame are you trading you base it on that now if i look at it on the 5 minutes right on the 5 minutes what is my latest fan that i can see on my charts i can see this let me take it on the 15 minute the same thing i can see on the 5 minute very actually maybe 5 minute can i can see the price action but i wouldn't really go down to that let's stick to higher down time frames so you have to decide the fan on what level you are trading all right well jack i really wouldn't want to talk about it right over here right now as i said this was a webinar based on fans only fans and let's just talk about fans on the gbp what are the targets of support there are different levels that we look at all right folks any other questions i i do hope this clears the concepts of fans somewhat There's a lot of folks find it a lot of traders do find it a little confusing it is not very confusing it's a very simple procedure if you keep the rules simple for me the concept has always been keep it simple if you keep it simple you can understand it period you're welcome bhai all right folks you're welcome thank you for being here if you have any questions you have my email you can send across the question you send across a mail you can talk about and before i go this is my website hi so good to see you back over here again so just one moment this is my website in case you're interested this is the services i offer fib forex 1 2 3 fibonacci is in forex and the 1 2 3 in forex and we have seen the effectiveness of that right you can get my details over here uh j uh just one moment i think wiki will be able to give you the transcript section uh wiki would you be able to put up the link for the transcripts where the previous recordings all our recordings are stored uh jack this is my website there's a website you can see it here or i i'll send across the link to you jay if you want for uh, the previous recordings what we have the previous recordings all right folks i think so that's about it so i'll see you next week the archives that that's right boy kid it's just the link that i need to give them where the archives the fx street archives all right so i'll see you next week always a pleasure being here good to talk to you all a lot of familiar faces i do hope the fib fans were good if you have any questions feel free to get back and well i'm here in the room for some time if you have any questions let me know but just handing over the room thank you once again